21st of February and I'm going to do a load of sewing today so I finally thought well it's that time now so it's, it's a little bit later than last year I think about 10 12 days later than it was last year but uh, that's because last year the, it was still a bit cold in April so I thought oh, this year I'll, I'll hold fire for you know a week or two so there's, there's loads to sew um, there's some pricking out to do I have pricked some stuff out already but I can kind of show you roughly what I did I have got some footage somewhere but I might as well just add it to this and just uh, just do a couple of extra ones um so there's what, what is the sewing there's all the brassicas um onions celery possibly spring onions maybe i might wait a week or two for spring onions yet um you know there's like obviously the, the cauliflower broccoli um what else is a uh, leeks we do some leeks obviously there's um, some of you might have seen a post I made that B&Q have kindly donated some compost because last year I did a comparison so they've said you know about doing it again this year so they gave me a lot of compost to be honest different varieties so I don't know how I'm going to do a proper comparison so I might just kind of do it where I'm exclusively using, using sort of B&Q um, compost this year you know um, and try and do it that way my sewings um, I've got some compost I'm going to sew the leaks in uh, tonight um, I've got some that's left over from a bag from last year. It's just the same, it's a multi-purpose um, the Verve compost. So that's what I'm going to be, you know, probably doing my sewings in um, in a lot of the stuff. But because um, I've already filled my trays up and soaked them already. So I've got a couple of other ones, these pots for the leaks. These are two litre pots. Um, so I've got a couple of composts here. Uh, I've got the, the, the multi-purpose peat free one and the um, sewing and cutting one. Because B and Q, I believe they are all completely peat free now. Now some of you are against peat free, and some are all for peat free. Um, yeah, in my own experience, um, some of the peat free stuff hasn't been great, but we just have to sort of learn to sort of work with it um, because it's it's all going to go peat free, um, and that's just the way it goes. But it, it isn't. It, it, it'll work fine you know a seed doesn't need much requirements to grow as long as it drains um you know some people don't like it because it's quite twiggy and quite coarse you know and but i don't know you look at some natural ground where you know leaves fall off trees and branches all that soil is pretty twiggy and a forest floor is kind of perfect really so um you have to look at it that way i think uh we get a bit used to having that really fine tilth and real crumbly soft compost, you know, which is nice to the, to the hands, but to be honest, I think a lot of times seeds, you know, you can pamper them too much or you can just throw a few seeds on the ground and you can pretty much guarantee the ones that you just kind of throw out on the ground will do all right. So don't baby your plants too much, I've always said, you know, they've got to go out into the wild and get blown about and up to the elements. So. A little bit of tough love and uh, they should be okay. Right, we'll get started because I'm hoping to do this in kind of pretty much one hit without to say me doing a lot of editing. Um, you know, because I've got to move the camera as well, but um, so it's going to be a long video. So some of you might not want to watch this in one hit, um, but rather than do it in little ones, you know, short videos, I thought I'll just whack this sewing up because my next sewing I'll probably do in two, three weeks, which would be things like possibly spring onions, beetroot, and things like that. Most of this won't even go into the ground until after the middle of April. Um, <clears throat> and then towards the end of April and into May, that's when you do your, your frost tender things and then you start obviously doing your late season stuff, you know, because something like Brussels sprouts and that you sort of sow, you know, April, May to plant out, June, July to harvest sort of September onwards, you know, right through to like sort of February the year after. So um, I'll go through the varieties as I'm uh, as I'm sowing them, but most of them are my usual ones, to be honest. Uh, I say leeks. I've got a couple of leeks. Uh, well, I'm doing the mussel brick as normal because it's just really reliable. But I do get a problem with rust, so I've I've got some. I found some that um, I had, which is called Crusader, which are supposed to be rust resistant. So I thought, you know what, I'll give them a go, and I'll put some of them up at the plot because I always get rust up at the plot. So we'll just we'll put them to the test that way. Right, so we'll get cracking. Um, because we're doing me mum's sweet peas, I'm doing a couple of trays of them. Um, but we'll do a, a little bit of pricking out first, um, and go from there. All right, we'll start off doing these onions. I don't even remember in my last video, I sold some called Exhibition. So these are the ones I've already sort of pricked out. Um, so I'll just show you how I pricked them out because I, I didn't prick them all out, I've still got some left. 
and these have never been watered apart from you know so it's like what three weeks four weeks something like that they've never been watered since you got watered that first time and that's it you know um, if you get too much water on you'll start to get that greeny look you know if you're not careful and as you can see on the top of these obviously these got watered when I, you know when you prick them out you do need a sort of initial watering in and i'll tend to bottom water and you you kind of feel some start feeling you know heavier than others so the, the lighter ones you can just pop in but Nothing. If you can look at the bottom of the pot and it looks dark, there's moisture in it because it's to get them roots. I'm not bothered about the tops at the moment, just get them roots down. Because just because you don't see anything growing on top doesn't mean there's no going on underneath. And so we'll find a pot the same as that. Oh, it's just a seven, seven centimetre pot. Um, I do have a preference for square pots and round pots, even though I do use round pots. There is supposed to be some sort of uh, scientific um benefit to square pots you know for roots find it easier to grow out of a square shape than a round shape whether that's true or not i don't know but apparently that's uh, supposed to be you know correct the idea is you don't let things get too pot bound you know if you don't if you're not ready to, for them to go out just pot them on a, a sort of a size up so i've not really pushed it down i just tap it down because it kind of mimics sort of natural settling that you give it a last you know light tap down but don't press it down uh use a dibber or a pencil or a spoon anything really just to sort of poke a seedling out and sort of make sure you get right down try and loosen it up and uh little roots on the end there simply make a hole in the middle of that one Drop it down, it don't go too deep, um, because it's not like a you don't like a leak sort of thing. But pretty much as long as because you can kind of see because it'll, it'll be white at the bottom where the actual bulbing area is. Now we'll just I'd carefully water that in from the top. Or you can bottom soak it if you want to, you see the top going dark, and put them on some card or something just to try and help pull any excess moisture out. And sort of refrain from watering for a good while, let them have that first initial bit of a dry out. And then I'd probably say bottom watering. But that's how you do onions to prick them out, you know, if you're potting them on. But, you know, if you're just growing them in, in the ground, that's fine. Just sow them. Just keep them weed free because you don't like uh, the old weeds. <coughs> right, we'll do some, do some lettuce. Um, these are the ones that are called, uh, called Valian or Valen. Um, I've got some left which are these, so I'll prick these out from them. They've probably been in here, you know, not that long, probably maybe eight to 10 days. You know, so it doesn't take them long. Um, I, you know, I like to prick them out, probably no bigger than this, to be honest, smaller the better for me. But I'm gonna, I've got some Grenoble red that I've sown. Um, they came up, they're, they're quite old seeds, you see, but you know, instead of sort of buying new, I think, well, run my old seeds, they're okay. So these are Grenoble Red. Um, these were sown on the 8th, these. So, what's that, 13 days ago. And they're up. They've just been put um, on a windowsill until they started sprouting. And then um, they've kind of been in cooler temperatures, but not outside yet. They will be going outside. Next two weeks, I'll run them through that cycle of, for probably a week, they'll spend the daytime outside and they'll come in and they'll be in the dark indoors at night, possibly in the coldest place in the house I can find, um, on the floor somewhere out of the way, um, to get them ready to go out to the polytunnel, to sort of, because uh, these are only early ones, you know, if a frost comes, it'll, it'll just kill them, you know, but uh, you've just got to be wary and start protecting, but there's a chance of some early salads, so you do this, and then sow some more in a month, you know, and you can, then you've always got, you know, if you get a late frost, you know unexpected you've got a backup but if you save some you know you can hold them back you know so you don't have to you know you can keep water in these and then pot them on as you need them so i'll prick uh, prick some of them out i can find my tray it's around somewhere all right <coughs> well, that all that is because people ask me, you know, where do I get them from? All it is is a basic um, 
40 cell tray that I've just cut in half because sometimes it get damaged and split but don't throw them away you've got a decent section lop it out because sometimes you don't want 40 or something sometimes you don't want 20 or something I don't know how many seeds are in there but I'll fill all these up uh, some people sort of commented you know how I fill seed trays up sometimes um, there's no real set way I think it's just habit with me I think you need to get a good amount in because if you don't have enough in or it's too loose when you come to push the seedling out it can just fall to pieces on you so I'll give it a good load up don't shake like that and just clear your sort of area a bit and I'll get it initially and sort of just drop it a couple of times and you know that'll just bang that down to the bottom do the same again go over the top like that and then I'll just sort of pat it down like that you know because that will that will sink a bit more when you water it but it's kind of compact enough and this has got vermiculite in it for those who don't know what vermiculite is um, it's this stuff I'm using the fine grade but you can use medium if you want it's like one to three mil particles you know there's some in there that are a bit bigger but um, it's probably mixed a ratio of um, sort of probably four parts compost to one part vermiculite, but you don't really need it. You know, it's uh, it's an option, but it's not essential. You know, perlite will work as well, so I don't think you have to go buying anything fancy. You know, I used to use sand at one time, you know, uh, silver sand or sharp sand. So I get a little seed tray like that. <laughs> Yeah, seedlings and these are still quite heavy so it's well watered that I thought I'd, I was going to lose my lettuce originally my, my valen because um, I was clearing the wind, windowsills off and I thought I'll shove them outside while I'm doing it I got a phone call and I was on the phone for an hour and I absolutely heaved it down so they got absolutely flooded but somehow I put them on some tissue paper to try and pull some water out of them you know because my peppers were the same as well I thought they'll be alright you know for a little while but well, it's just simple things like that can happen. And it's just a case of see dibbering, tease it out. So you get the uh so the plant there with the roots. Make a little hole. You can plant it deeper. Don't worry about that. So just dip it around that like that. Because when you water it, it'll settle it in. You know, and um, if you're new to sort of pricking out and that, you, you might find it a bit fiddly at first, but you'll get the angle of it. So it doesn't have to be a divvy. You can use a spoon handle or a fork or a bit of wire, anything. It doesn't matter at all. You know, the amount of times I've, you know, I've, I've got this dibber. I mean, it was a cheap dibber, like 50p or something. You know, I've lost it that many times. So you just use the next best thing, really. You know, little green garden canes, anything, doesn't matter. You know, you you know, sometimes you can expect the odd one to sort of fail, you know, pricking out, but usually they're all right. Don't be frightened of picking some real small ones out either. I mean, go through your biggest ones, you know, your better ones. But, uh, you know, the small ones will be fine. Because all you've got to watch is if you've got a lot of foliage on top, it all looks okay. The thing is, have you got enough root to support that? That's the thing with tall leggy plants, you see. They, they grow up too much and they just can't support the self on the stem. So they just they give up. Use that stem to like not enough light. Yeah, I have some grow lights. You know, and um, I'll probably put them to use. <clears throat> but um, don't uh, don't panic if you you know if you haven't got any grow lights or polytones or greenhouse just just wait a little while. You know the the idea of having all the grow lights and things like that and polytone and greenhouse it just means you've got a little bit of a longer season. But you know you can make the amend a bit of clear perspex. You know just sort of. 
kind of put over a makeshift raised bed type thing is in theory it's a cold frame yeah so you don't need anything special your plants really don't mind your plants do not know the difference between a 200 quid greenhouse and a thousand pound greenhouse they won't know the difference you know the only thing that will be different is structural sturdiness and off the winds we've had these last night three bloody horrible storms and that's why i thought i'll uh, i'll sow these because i haven't been down to the plot yet still um i thought if i sold my stuff I'll, uh, it'll force me to you know deal with it because i know i'm going to go to the plot and there'll be damage and if i hadn't sold anything i'd probably think oh you know can't be bothered this year having a year off because now worse when you go down your plot and it's all damaged i mean i've seen pictures on social media people polytunnels and greenhouses you know and um the amount of people that be like myself that haven't yet been down they're waiting for the better weather and when they get there it's a you know fences down you know sheds blown over and all sorts so it's just one of them things you know um so if you're building anything build it well and it won't last forever so it's like me i know my fence probably in pieces um fruit cage might be damaged i don't know i'll just deal with that somehow um and as cheap as possible because it is well, I don't, you don't really have to have a fence and all that lot but uh, to where my plot is it's landowner likes to just let the animals roam free sometimes so I don't fancy doing all this hard work to feed a lot of animals. Oh man, feeding me on cane and that. Because I grow a lot for my tortoise. Because he is pretty much like a goat in a shell, really. He's getting a bit, uh, a bit fed up with being cooped indoors now. And uh, hopefully, in those six weeks or some decent weather and uh, I can get a cut on the grass and let it grow back a little bit and they can get out there then I mean some of these smaller ones might fail because they are pretty small but I mean I'm probably not going to need 20 of these not for starting off with but I don't grow them as full lettuce I grow them as um, cut and come again you know, so you can get plenty of pickings from a single lettuce. Space them sort of like 9 to 10 inches when they go in the ground. You don't tend to let them get any bigger than sort of, you know, so they're just about nearly touching each other. Keep them well weeded, clean underneath. You know, and it's that time of year. So as soon as the weeds start growing, the ground's getting warm enough and the slugs will be out, so... Get an early sort of control on them and uh, get the upper hand. I found last year going out in the dark and um, picking them off that way. Uh, there's no, I might as well use that label because there's pretty much no more left in that. And you could use that compost again to sow some else in. I've got some rocket to prick out. I'm not going to bother videoing that. That's exactly the same. I've just got two varieties. I've got the um, um, Artemis, which I've grown the last few years, which is a good one. Then I've got some of the Frankie seeds. I think it's just uh, Rockola. Um, I thought I'll try a bit of both. You know, obviously the um, I didn't sow as many of the um, Artemis, but uh, I'll probably pick it on ten of each out. Because they don't mind a bit of cooler weather rocket. They don't like the warmth because um, they do rocket to seed. And I'm going to do with them a little watering can, slowest watering can in the world. And just because uh, the compost is slightly damp, you know, but you don't have to sort of wallop it all down in one go, all the water. You know, you can water a bit now and then give it 10 15 minutes and add a bit more. Just slowly building up. You know, they'll have this good water now, 
I'm probably not going to get water again for about three weeks. Because this time of year, you know, there just isn't the heat to dry things out. And you've got to watch it, obviously, if it's a lot of water in there and you get a cold snap and it freezes, then you might be in trouble. But you can't predict everything, so uh, you've got to always accept a, the odd time you're going to get a bit of a loss. Right, so that's the, uh, the lettuce. I'll do all my lettuce, the rocket, exactly the same, pricking out. Uh, peppers, the ones I saw in the last one. Um, got complete utter failure on this uh, phobus, nothing at all. Actually got a random weed growing there. Um, I think I saw like it was five or six of the uh, giant bell pepper. But I have sown some more. Um, I'll prick them out. Uh, but I have sown some more. I've got some jalapenos, uh, basket of fire, tarquino. Um, peppers, all, they'll be all done the same. They're going to go into these tiny little pots. Because peppers are pretty slow growing to be honest, you don't seem to be doing much until you get later into the year. But uh, the idea is, is don't pot them into a big pot straight away. Um, you know, the other round pots, they will go into square pots next, um, but I'll let them fill this with roots. That's it with peppers, you wait until the roots are getting near, you know, it's not pot bound, but it's getting close, pot it on and keep building it up that way. Otherwise, um, you, you know, you put it into a really big pot it'll do absolutely nothing on the top but it's still filling the pot with the uh, roots you know so just sort of instead of having it sat there in a big pot taking up all the space doing nothing um in these little pots and they probably you know won't gain much in size you know um Probably sort of like a six or eight leaf stage, maybe sort of April, May. But it's just as soon as you get that temperature spike and everything sort of comes to life, then. I don't know how many peppers I'm going to grow this year. No idea. That's how I've... The pots are okay, but they just take a lot of water in. So, the same with these, just prick them out. Plenty of it. You can bury these a little bit deeper. You know, because you don't need, you know, you haven't got the room for pepper, you know, for, for a lot of plants. You'd be better off growing like uh, chilies or baby peppers, really, because they, uh, they don't take up loads of room or anything, but they don't give like massive yields. I don't think you're going to grow peppers and get stacks off them, you know. I think if you can get something like six or eight, you've done okay. And they'll be green. So that's why peppers, you need to start pretty early. You know, to try and get that uh, sort of dual crop on some of them. You know, you can try and get a, a pick, you know, July, August, and then when you pick them, the next batch should be hopefully ready by sort of September, October, before the old dreaded winter comes back. There. All I'm gonna do with these is gonna a real just a general little splash on top just to just make sure around the stem is bedded in a bit. But other than that, I'm just gonna put them in a pot it with a little bit of water in the bottom and just let them sit there and soak up what they need. Let's fill this from a jug as quick. A bit of water in the bottom and just let them take up what they need because it won't take up more than what they need you know when you soak from the bottom you know and then for a day or two you know it, you know it'll feel like it might be a bit too wet but as long as it's not absolutely drenched it won't 
won't cause any harm as such, but you know, roots do need air. Right, so I think that's all the pricking out. I'll get on with some, some of the fun stuff now, which is the old sewing. People ask me about these, these trays, you know, um, they're just called a potting tray. You know, you can use like cement trays, anything like that. Um, I got this from Wilco's, but you get from a like, and q um, all sorts of wicks. Online you'll find them. It's just basically a big tray. You know, sometimes I don't even want to use these. I make a lot of mess and just have to clear it up afterwards. All right, we'll start off with uh, sweet peas, the elders mix. <sighs> so, same compost. Um, it, it's been it's been pre-watered, watered it um, when I filled it probably about a week ago, and then it, they've been sat in the polytunnel, and then uh, gave them another quick water last night. We're watching because the polytunnel's got quite a bit of white fly in it, so I need to sort that out really. But dubious about putting plants in there when it's full of white fly. And because uh, sweet peas are quite a hard seed, some people soak them, some people don't, some people nick them. Uh, but I've soaked these; they've been soaked overnight just to bulk them up in size. It speeds the germination up basically, but you know if you're not in a major hurry, don't worry about it. Because they're quite a big seed, I'm going to use my sharpie for this, and I'm just going to sort of take it down, probably 15, 20 mil down. So I punch all the middle of each module or cell. Idea these could do with being a little bit deeper cell, really, but they'll do. You know, you can obviously you can put you know like three or four in a small pot and do it that way. So I'm direct. Um, mice do like them, so you just got to bear in mind for that. I think everything, everything has a bit of a, a pest out there somewhere. And all I'll do with these, I'll keep them indoors on windowsill until Probably just over over half of them have germinated and just started coming through. I don't want anything that's sort of like got more than sort of an inch and a half growth on top because they'll start to get leggy quick and then they'll go out. Which basically kind of slows them down a bit and gets them ready. And they get a nice sturdy plant then. You know, the lids will come off. They can get a little bit of a breeze. As long as it's not an icy breeze. Because, you know, that does dry the plants out quite a bit. Like I said, this is going to be a real long video. I may split it in two parts, I don't know. You simply got one seed in each one. Sometimes you might think you might have had a misfire, but it's quite easy to miss one. You know, or dropped, especially with small seeds, you drop two in, but I mean, sweet peas aren't too bad. Partly while that's soaking them, really, because they do swell up. Um, I don't know what the dominant colours will be this year. This is think is in the old seed. Um, there's a for those who are new to the channel and that um, there is a bit of a history behind these. Um, Mum always used to grow them. Kind of a bit of cross pollination from a few varieties many years ago, and um, Mum used to grow them in the garden. And then when she she passed away, um, just over four years ago now. Because um, so I've never been really one for flowers, I thought I'll keep them going in her memory and. And people wanted some of the seeds to grow on YouTube, so so they started uh, giving them away. So they're grown all over the country now, in the UK, and Ireland as well, Scotland. I don't think they've made it abroad. Um, I've not sent any abroad anyway. But, uh, it's nice because some people send me photographs. And that's it's, it's nice to nice to see it and the whole family you know they, they watch my videos as well the whole family so it's nice for them for my sisters and my, my dad as well and i'm just going to fill them in with the compost
quick water on there. Isn't it? Not much, just sort of light across the, the middles just to settle that. You know, if you don't have good contact and compost on your seed, um, that won't help it. And if it's not tightly sort of held down, the root can push the seed out. And then the seedling, the actual seed pops up and sort of dries off and you end up with just a, a stub with the seed stuck on it and it doesn't do anything else. Right, so that's one of them done. Got another one to do. So this uh, kitchen is absolutely full of seed trays. Because it's absolutely horrible outside. It's just done nothing but rain and blow gales. So I have to catch the ferry to my plot. But I'm going to go down. Over, within the next week, I'll go down and brave it. I did have some cauliflower down there that's either gone well over or it's still okay. I've got some of that purple sprite and broccoli down there. Um, how that is, I've no idea. I say I need to sort my fence out this year. It's just getting the funds for it. You know, cause it's uh, it's not a cheap thing to do, but um, that fence has been up probably nearly nine, ten years. So it's done all right. Um, some of you already know it's like the whole sewing pricking out is my um, actually my favourite part it's just something you know I, I never get tired of seeing like you've dropped a small seed in there and then you, you prick it out and you, you put it out so when you watch it grow and you think oh you know it's come from a tiny little seed you know from that seed the amount of other, you know, more seeds you can get, you know, you're going to take some of the root seed. I don't know, drop, drop, yeah, I've got one down there. So it's like nature is quite a amazing thing. I think the more you sort of intervene too much, the more problems you cause. So I try and leave things to cope as best as they can on their own. should um well it is a case of you know survival of the fittest you know if, a, if they've been a bit too pampered first gust of wind they'll be laying down you know because there's no harm if you've got the space or the power out in a greenhouse or something you know, to put a little fan out there because uh, you know a little bit of airflow across your seedlings will uh Wobble them about a bit, but that you know sort of signals it to produce a hormone to thicken up the stem, so we get a sturdier plant. So it doesn't bother me about going in, and I'll sort of get my seedlings and I'll just waft my hand over them. That way, it'll just um, knock them about a bit, and it'll just generally make them grow a little bit firmer. Not too hard. It's just to basically give them a bit of a wobble. You know, cause it's not all about, uh, you know, look how tall my plant is. It's like, well, height of the plant isn't really much to do with it. It's all round how durable is it is, how full, you know, is it healthy, is it sturdy, is it got good roots? Because without good roots, you, 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 it's just not going to do well. Sometimes you can look at a plant thing, that's not doing well, cut your losses and start again long term it's it's just better to start again you know, I mean I had problems last year with compost you know a different brand um, there was something wrong with it 
and yeah, I, had, I lost a lot of plants because of it. You know, but uh, I managed to get some to survive, but my onions took a bit of a hit and I've, I've not got many onions left to be honest. Out of how many seeds I sold last year, there's not that many, uh, many left. Alright, so that's, that's them. Right, we'll do some uh, brassicas next. Just clear the old tray out of the way. I have to start remembering to write labels on these now. I do my brassicas, you know, all the brassicas are sown exactly the same way. Um, I have these, um, like little strips. I think they're from a company called Stewart's, which is spelled S T E W A R T. I think they're seven centimeter by, uh, no, yeah, seven centimeter by three centimeter by 20. I think they are. Um, they're dead handy to be honest. I don't really sow anything direct into modules as such, apart from you know the sweet peas and. I used to do lettuce like that, but I just find do it in these, and then you prick them out, and then you've got empty sort of cells. So, uh, what should we start with? Um, make some room on here. Start with. I'll go with what I grow for cane actually, which is like I grow for a spring green, but I just grow it for greens really. And this is. Um, called Durham Early. I've actually got some um, got collards called Champion. Um, they're a bit tougher. You know, they're not for me, they fit the tortoise. You know, collards are good for you. I do grow quite a lot of these Durham Earlies. I've grown these for years actually, they're great for the spring greens. Um, I'm just going to sort of lightly broadcast these. You know, they have, it has been pre-watered that tray, but it'll go get another quick water. Not much. The idea is it'll it'll humidify itself and build up its damp, you know, moisture content that way. You know, and they're they're probably about you know between five and ten mil down. Then I'm just gonna get some compost, sprinkle that over the top, level it off, give it a top down. Take off the excess. All right, so. You can just cover them with just plain vermiculite if you want, you know. No having that. You know, this is all kind of pre sieve this compost. You know, because sometimes you know some compost, yeah, they have chunky lumps in, so but that's okay for the roots. But for the tops it's nice to cover them with a bit of sieve stuff. Give that a quick uh, wetting down on top. You know, and they'll be ready to prick out probably in you know, two weeks. Put a label on that before I forget. Someone told me a tip a few years ago when you write your labels right from the end that way, because I used to just do them any old way, and then you think, oh yeah, it's a bit easier that way. And I remember to get myself some uh, Sharpies. The brassica on. Uh, we'll do a couple more out. Um, what else we do now? We'll do um, I think we'll have got cauliflower next. Um, I'm just going to sow Clapton for now. Um, I need to look back at my videos last year because I grew a few varieties last year and I, I've got two earlier ones. Come on. Terza, and there was another one. I just wanted to double check, see which one did all right, and I might do a few of them ones as well. But they sold exactly the same. Like when I come to do my Brussels sprouts, they're done exactly the same as well. 
You do the Swede the same as well, I, you know, unless you want to do it direct. You know, most of the seed packets will say, you know, February, March, or February to April, or March. I mean, we're near enough in March now. And these, it's just going to send again a bit of a, bit of a broadcast. And then I'll see, you know, if some don't pop up, then I can just sow some more to work out how many I need. But they are F1s, these, so you don't get very many seeds. I do grow a lot of brassicas. Right, so I'll just cover that one up. I've actually I've still got a lot of cauliflower left in the freezer and broccoli, but. You know, this, these won't be ready till, um, well, they don't have a real cold start, sort of end of June, July. So I usually, about 100 days, something like that. But like last year, we had a really cold April, so it set stuff back by about three weeks. A little bit of a water. So if you're worried if you've overwatered it, just stick it on some kitchen roll to try and sort of wick the water out of it. And you don't put a lid on it. You know, let it dry off a tad. Right, label for that, before I forget. So that's the Clapton cauliflower. Let's see broccoli. Try and find the seeds for the broccoli. Um, I've got a couple of different varieties to, to try out this year. Um, that might sort of a bit late season, but doing the usual aquils. You know, DT Browns, but you know, any seed company will do. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not supplied with any seeds by you know DT Browns or anything. I get more seeds off the subscribers, to be honest. They send me seeds. These are seeds that were last year's. So I'll uh, I'll sow these because they're still in date, and we'll see how they get on before I rip open the new pack because they're, they're dated for another three years yet them ones. Now I can in one bed at the allotment I can kind of you know I can get like 32 broccoli but it is a bit of a tight squeeze so I might just ration it down to 24 per bed this year. You know, which isn't bad because I can do two runs of broccoli quite easily. You know, so now and then, so end of May. Let's get like 48 broccoli. So you need to, it's the only thing now, it, price is hiking up on everything. Keep freezers running. I'm not going to bother, you know, some people date all this, all these things, but I'd, the reason why I have the YouTube channel, it's easy to just check back what you did. Right, put our seed trays in there. What else have we got now? Uh, two more trays, what have we got? Um, Golden Acre. Oh, I'll do them again. I've got some other ones, but they're a bit late. The killers all, I like them, but they're a bit late season, them ones. So the Golden Acre and Rigoletto. The Rigoletto were a bit like a Savoy cabbage. Um, they were great. They stood for absolutely ages. Uh, 
you know, so they are something you can kind of sew, you know, quite a few, put them all in and they just sort of like get to a certain size and sit at that. I don't know how many seeds I've got left in this pack. Not very many. So, uh, six there. Uh, Got some more then, yep. So I might do so I might keep the real SO up this end. All the uh, gold maker down this end. You know, sometimes you get the odd muddle up. But before now, I've had pepper seeds, um, beetroot seeds from packets mixed up. Where you get random turnips growing and different type of pepper all together. I'll we'll keep these seeds right down this end. That's the uh, Golden Acre, Prime or two. Get some labels for them for I cover it up. Two down this end. You know, certainly got about, you know, maybe five mil of compost on top. I mean, if I was, you know, growing them outside direct or into the ground, I probably would go a little bit deeper. What I like to do if I'm sowing direct outside is make a little. Uh, furrow and then um, soak the furrow first you know the actual drill and then um, put the seeds in and sprinkle compost on top sometimes in the, when it's warm put a plank of wood over the stripper that you sowed the seeds that'll stop them from drying out and you can lift it off in a week or something like that give them a chance to sp split Right, I've got one more left here, so I think what I might do in this one is uh, celery. I've got some seeds here, um, tango, I did some called blush last year, I don't know how many left in this tango. But, uh, you know, you can grow um, celeriac. You're always better with celery and celeriac. They always, you know, sow them quite early on. There isn't very many seeds in here at all. So I might do a bit of a, a double sowing on this. And the other seeds are either a hybrid apparently. stuck in one corner. Celery seeds are tiny. They do tend to do better if you just sort of put a little bit of like, but if it's only a thin layer, I'll, uh, the compost will be alright. 
There's a few more of these seeds. These are these blush ones because they're not an F1. I'm trying to keep these up this end now. Labels. What's it got? Tango and blush. Yeah, I did blush last year. You know, they're okay, actually. You know, pinkish colour plant at the bottom. They're okay. Yeah, just a little bit of a light colour. As long as I can't see the seed, that's uh, good enough for me. No water. Tango up that end and blush down that end. That's all the brassicas, they're all done in there so just put a propagator lid on them, they're going on the windowsill and then as soon as they're sort of like through, they'll start giving them natural daylight and then uh, give them actual darkness so they get a night time to get a bit of a rest because they're a bit like us, need a bit of a rest, can't grow all the time. Right, another break, I think another cup of tea and we'll get back on with the, the onions and the leeks and that. Right, we'll do the onions now, so I'm just going to do one tray because I do them all the same because I've got a few. Um, to actually sow, so instead of you seeing me sow like nearly 200 of these, so um, these are just basically, I think they're like 48, I think, um, they're tiny, they're only like 15 mil square, probably about 20 mil deep. They are good, but they can dry out quite quick. Um, the idea is, is I'm going to sow them in these and see how they get on. If I need to pull them out of these, they do pop out nice and easy, once the roots have plenty of roots on there. I try and keep the bottom, um, these off um, the, the, the tray you know once they start getting roots to try and prune them off to keep the roots actually in there and then I'll do I'll just pop them into these because you will get some that will fail because onion seeds can be stubborn you know and I've uh, I've seen some reports of various sort of brands of onion seeds and things failing and just generally bad put you know germination so far this year so I don't know if there's a few bad batches of seed going about or it's just old seed um because really i think mean, you know sometimes when you're paying for seed you, you should be fresh seed really you know um fair enough if you've had it for a couple of years then it's different but i mean if you if you've bought seed from a supplier and it's cost you say you know three quid for a pack of seeds you think well I want to spend me three quid on some fresh seeds don't give us like you know two year old stock you know because I think with every year the, the quality will go down to a degree but you know it's there's no true way of telling if a seed's you know really 100% viable all the way we'll say with allium seeds that all the onion family is they are a pretty tough little seed so um the initial watering when they don't get cold they need a need to need a good wetting up to be honest don't be frightened they're really soaking that compost up and then letting it drain let all the excess drain give it a couple of days to drain then put your seed in and then you can give it a little watering again so there'll be two varieties that i'm going to grow uh, same as usual are uh, red spark the F1s and the Santero. Um, it's supposed to be mildew resistant because I do get a problem with mildew. I had some problems with like, um, you know, rotting off last year on the tops. Um, just have to um, watch that. It's like a black like of ground, sort of soil fungus 
spore that you know it kind of they just they'll be growing fine and then they'll just sort of wilt at the top and it can spread out from that so if you see it pull them out and try and limit the spread um, but uh, just when things you know everything has its problem sometimes you know and uh, yeah I suppose crop rotation helps but once it's there's a problem in the bed it can linger about there is ways of waking spores up using like you know you soak onions and garlic in water and then water the ground but don't grow anything that year because it'll activate the, the spores and they'll grow and they'll have nothing to breed on and they'll die that year then but uh, unless i get like a complete 100 percent fail um i'll just keep keep going so like i say there'll be a lot of these that'll be fine because um quite easily go through 100 150 onions because these store great i mean I'm, once i pulled i think i pulled them out of the ground july and they're still fine now they'll be fine up until april but they'll be all gone by then so try and get one you can multi-sow these if you want in the bigger ones a lot of people do multi-sow onions you know what you can do you just get smaller onions just try and sort of got one seed in each sort of station You know, it is quite difficult to see. I don't wear glasses, but uh, I think the next couple of years I'm going to need some. So it doesn't matter if you drop like one or two in, because you can always, as they, as they start to come up, you can pull one out and stuff like that. Well, I think if you can get like you know 70% germination, you're all right. I mean, the other way you could do these, you could sort of market it with my exhibition onions, just put them in one of them strips and prick them out from that, you know, it'll be perfectly fine. Which I might start doing that next year, but it's just quicker to be honest. I can prick them straight out from that into the bigger cell trays it's just mainly i do these because because of the space because once you start sewing everything like this you go from having uh windowsills free and suddenly you've used them all up and then when you come to prick them out you know it it sort of expands immensely so you're kind of hoping that you get a a couple of weeks where um, you can sort of stagger sow things a little bit to give it the germination time to give them the heat to germinate and then once they're up you can kind of put them out under cover and you just have to sort of have a free area to bring them in at night you know if you're worried about the cold you can fleece things but like i say you never know you might be in bed one night and you get a real sudden cold blast and all that work's gone I right, just need to find my little sieve wherever I put it. Put it down somewhere. Right. So I'll sieve this. You just do like vermiculite on the top of these if you want. But I say it's the same stuff there. The sorting. I've just added a little bit more vermiculite to this top stuff. I saw. Uh, you know, you can just saw them straight in the dry compost, and then once you're happy, they're in. Just pop it on a tray of water until you see the tops darken off. All them cells have soaked up water. Then. I'm just going to give them quick water just to settle them. Um, like I say, I'm not too worried at this stage with onions. I mean, once they're up, be careful because they can damp off pretty easy. Because onions do like... Uh, Something that can drain well. You know, because uh, some composts that are like loam based can sort of be a bit a bit hefty when you sort of water it. They, you know, they kind of blanket a little bit. 
So they were the Santero. That's them. That's to do all the onions. I'll do exactly the same as that. But I won't bother doing all of them right now because I've got six trays to sort of six of these, which is like nearly 200 onions. Well, no, it's nearly 300 onions, but I'll be happy if 200 of them come up. Right, we shall have a look at the uh, leeks now and uh, these, these couple of compost I'm using. I'll just have a bit of a tidy up. Right, so I'll just show you these two composts I'm using first. So here's the one that being q have donated. This one, which is the... Uh, Sewing and cutting compost, or seed and cutting compost. Um, peat free, I think it's kind of like a, you know, it's koi and um, it's a bit like coconut, coconut husk and um, sand. I don't mind, I tried it last year, so I did with beans and stuff in it, I think last year, and cucumbers and that. They were fine. It's a little bit wet because obviously it's been stored, you know, outside, but um, other than that, it looks okay. And then the other one. It's just uh, the, the multi-purpose, which I shall uh, show you in a second. Much bigger bag like. That. That's the other one. It's just the, uh, the multi-purpose compost. It's peat free. Um, it's like you know, a bit like brackeny type of compost, which I would say twiggy. It's fine. It actually, things like peppers would be fine in that. So, uh, I will be putting some vermiculite with it for leaks. Uh, you don't have to, but it's just it's just habit with me, I guess. So I'm going to sieve it. Um, I don't throw away the chunky stuff. You can either put it on your ground or sometimes I incorporate it to back into compost when I put it in the bigger pots or when I'm doing the potatoes in the pots. So, uh, we we'll be using these sort of size pots, two litre. Which is a case of uh, uh, this scoop. A couple of scoopfuls on there. This is quite a, you know, a fine, I think it's probably something like, what, four, five mil sieve. So it's quite a fine one. You know, usually I'd, I'd put it out on the Try and give it a good fluffing up my hands first. The only reason I've got it on top of this other tray here is um, you can't expect everything to go through just shaking it. You know, because a lot of the uh, fibrous stuff will stay on top. So the idea is, is um, you kind of rub that through. You know, because a lot of people think, oh, it's not going through the sieve, it's horrible and lumpy, but trust me, it'll be fine. Whatever you're using, it'll be fine. Because once you start doing like no dig garden, you get used to sowing and pretty coarse stuff. And it's all this fibrous stuff. Just help. You know, it'll retain moisture. And for when you're trying to pot on stuff, the root ball will stay intact. And it'll be great as like a bit of a mulch out, to be honest. You know, so when you put your plants out, you've got a bag of this stuff left, just pop it around the top. It'll suppress weeds, and the worms will take it into your soil, so it's not all wasted. Just be careful in case there's any bits of glass or anything like that. You know, I should have gloves on really, but so far, seems alright. Like you say, you can, you can spend as long as you like working this round if you want. But with stuff like that... It'll, it'll be fine, you know, in, in a, like courgettes and things like that, you put that, mix it, you know, back in. I think you can get them, I can't remember what they're called now, them things like a, a bit like a trommel type thing, but you can, you spin it round. I've seen Nige use them a few times, I keep thinking that I'll get one, but I don't know, you just get used to, you can I'll just manage. Years ago, I used to put all your compost in a, a big bucket and sit your wellies on and stand in there, twisting your feet about to break it up. A few stones in there. 
nothing that's going to cause any issue. And yeah, fair enough if you were putting that, if it was like that and you put that on top of your seeds, it might struggle a bit, but I'm not, I'm not too fussed at all. Keep working this till it breaks up and goes through because like I said that fibres, it's all the layer pockets, it's just structure. You know really it's like all well, the leaves fall in the autumn and uh, the greenery rots off them but you've still got all the veins like bark and things like that and it's, it's all it is. Just that sometimes people expect it to be super fine when it doesn't really matter. We've got enough in there. We're getting a bit in there now. Let's pop that down there. Let's take that out. So just kind of working out the sort of ratio that I want to mix to try and keep it fairly even. Or two litre pot, so see what I've got in there. Probably take a little bit of that out to be honest. And uh, probably say, I don't know, same again, probably four, four parts compost. So one part of vermiculite. But leaks will be fine, you know, you don't have to do that. Just to pull that out. Nothing wrong with that at all. You know, because by the time you've got lots of the more expensive compost and put them through sieves and stuff, you know, probably it's got no like, you know, any bad sort of green waste sort of. And it, you never know when anything has got green waste. I don't know if it has got any green waste, I'm not sure. But uh, there can be problems with that. So I'll just tap it down a bit like that, so. That probably got a really good water in that. I'll probably soak it from the bottom as well. No good compost, my hands are black, you know. Like some of the old grow bags used to be like that. They, when you open them, they stunk, but it's like anything. If you get silt, silt is just really rich. You know, if you had a bit of a ditch somewhere and it had silt in the bottom of it and you put that stuff on top of your raised bed or something like that and give it a, a month or two to sort of sink into it, be full of nutrients, that. It's just basically leaves, twigs, all sorts. And it just rots into a sludge. That's what you see. If I don't get this a good soak in now, then they might struggle to germinate. I'll probably just, you know, you put a cling film or whatever the top of these until they germinate. That's that one. So we'll put, uh, I can find the leek seeds. There we go. I'll we'll put, um, put mussel bra in that one. Oh, it's already open this, but I think it was open last year, this pack, so it should be okay. And they're going to stay in here until they're kind of getting on for like pencil thickness. So you can thin them out. Ideally, just don't go mad with your sewing. Give them a good old spread out. You might think oh, I've not sold many there, but you could be quite easily, you know, put, I mean, there's probably about 40 I've got in there. I'm not frightened of doing leaks a bit deeper. You know, I'm going to have 10 mil on top of them. I 
mean, there's water just coming out the bottom of the pot now. Just tamper that down. So I'm not pressing it down, it's just getting sort of patted down just to make sure that the seed has got good contact. Just get a bit more water. I mean, yeah, you shouldn't really tap water or let your tap water stand at room temperature for a while and whatnot, but... It's, uh, it's not really a, an essential thing. That's all the water they're going to get for quite a while. So, I mean, there's plenty of water in that. It's coming out of the bottom. I'll just stand that on the tray. There. Right. So I'll leave that water there because the next lot of compost can soak that up, I'm not bothered. Alright, so the next one, just get rid of that compost off of there. So don't throw it away because there's nothing wrong with it. You know, if you put it all in a bag, it would just break down even more over time. So don't throw any of it away. So this is the, uh, so that was the multi-purpose, and this is the, the seed and cutting compost. You know, you can tell straight away it's got sand in it. You know, and uh, it'll be fine, this. I think this, if you, if you wet it a bit, it might clump up a little bit, but if you look at any sort of seed supplier, a lot of them always say, like, you know, John Inns number one and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it has sort of elements of feed in it, but they're quite loam based, you know, and uh, loam based are great for, you know, like after last year's sort of test, I found like loam based compost were great for root vegetables, you know, um, like potatoes, carrots, that type thing would be fine for, but uh, anything fruit wise that didn't need to go deep down, did better in real fibrous stuff. You know, it's just a, some of the fibrous stuff can dry out quite quick. But this time of year, nothing's going to dry out rapid. You know, this is pretty damp anyway, this stuff. So sometimes I like to sieve my compost and leave it a couple of days. Just to sort of air out a bit. You know, because when it's laid out in a tray, you can sort of have a good look at it. But yeah, all this fibrous stuff, you know, it's that in your soil, you see. I mean, it's just it's like loads of little air pockets around it, you know, and that'll hold what you could squeeze out and it'll have moisture content in it. And your roots would wrap all around that. I mean, yeah, when it comes to pricking stuff out, if it's quite fibrous and you've left it a little bit too long, the roots could be like well down in it. But, uh, It'll be fine, this stuff for me. A little bit more. And then kind of mix it the same sort of ratio, or thereabouts anyway. You know, if you needed to feed any seedlings that are in there a while, like, you know, the leeks are going to be in there a while. Um, just something like a real basic seaweed. You know, light feed of that. You know, if you were going to bottom water it, just put it, uh, you know, like a, a teaspoonful in some, about half a litre of water or something like that. Just put it in a dish and sit the pot in it for 20 minutes, half an hour. Because the leeks will fill these pots with roots. You know, when you plant your leeks out, you do, you, you can leave the roots on, you know, but something, you know, like I do, I, tend to trim them down to about an inch. Just makes it easier to drop in that little board out hole. So then again, you, you, this stuff will go through, you keep working it, you know, you take as long as you like over it. But you know, I'm not, it's not gonna get thrown away.
you know, but obviously that's there's, there's less in that to be honest than there was in the other one, but it is a seed compost. We kind of we kind of expect it. I'll just see if I've got enough to fill the pot. Same. So it's not an exact science, you know, all ratios, a lot of it is thereabouts. Because yeah, you can use quite a lot of them if you like, you know. I find if you have it on the surface a lot, it alters the colour of the compost, which I've always found sometimes you think, well, in, in the colder months, the darker that stuff is on the top, the more heat it'll take. But if it's in a black pot and you put all your pots and trays together, you know, if you've got some bags of compost, stick them all underneath the seedlings because they're all taking heat during the day and then they'll give out that vital bit of temp, you know, degrade degree so more at night which it's a big difference you know it's the difference between uh, the seedlings becoming frozen or not really um right pot it's a lot easier doing this when you're outside in pods or on that but it's currently like uh, it's the next day now actually it's uh, one o'clock in the morning. So I get this done. Busy week, got a gig this weekend. Right, get some water in there. Probably won't need quite as much water because it is quite uh, it's quite damp. Because it's got sand in it. Sand does kind of retain a bit of moisture to be honest. You know, you have a sort of like Got a big wet lump of sand and blocked it out, it kind of holds that water a bit. So just one thing you have to bear in mind. So as long as it can drain, you know, water won't stay up high up wet, it'll only puddle down below. So as long as it can drain down, it will eventually over a day or so drain down to what it can just about hold on to. Right, so these are going to be the Crusader, new variety for me, F1. I was going to grow some onions called Kappa, but I've not grown for a few years because they're a bit like a cylindrical shallot type. But um, they stopped doing them. That's a bit of a nightmare. Not quite as many seeds in these because they're in F1. seeds in anyway. But, uh, brother in law's got an allotment so uh, it's always handy if you've got a surplus you get any uh, people up at your allotment site need anything. Sometimes you get some people that are just taking on a plot. It's nice for them if they can get a good crop first year you know if you've got like a someone can help them out and give them some seedlings because that's where a lot of them struggle to be honest when they're starting off so it's that seedling phase get the ground dug and everything and just wait to get the plants out or the timing of it you know they've not sold anything they get on the plot sort of like june and it's getting a bit late then for certain things so if you say i've got some seedlings already started at least it gets them growing summer and if they grow and they get a harvest then they uh, then they see the reward then and they think oh yeah this is actually worth it Even though when you're out there in the middle of winter, freezing cold, you think, is this worth it? But when you've done it year after year, it's just a, it's an argument you always have with, have with yourself. You always think, what am I doing? And you think, well, when you look at it in the summer, you get constantly reminded. So that's uh, Leek. 
Goose Anna. Ridge in there. Now, so they offer the muscle bra. Now, right on the back of this one, this is the uh, multi. That's the multi compost that the muscle bra is in. Back of this one, I'll just put uh, S plus C, so it's a seed and cutting compost. And we'll just see how they go. I say it's the only way I can really test the compost out because there's that many. But obviously, when I grow some potatoes, I might just sort of like do some potatoes in each one. So I think that's all I'm going to do actually for tonight, anyway. Right, that's it for this video. Like I said, it was going to be a long one. Um, so I've got a lot on tonight, really. You know, um, it's take a couple of hours, probably, to uh, get everything done. So I tidied it up and then um, put some stuff on the windowsill here and make a bit of room. Sort the rest out in the morning because um, not, not going to do many harm tonight, you know. So the, everything will stay in, you know. For, uh, I'll start, some of the lettuce will start slowly hard enough outside. I'll probably print my rocket out um, tomorrow or the next few days. And so in the next video will be things like beetroot and spring onions and possibly some other brassicas I might do some more of the collards you know I might do some of them might do some mustards we'll just see what the uh, weather's looking like and hopefully there'll be a bit of um, footage from the plot as well so I'll get down there I'm hoping it's just not really bad um, I just can't afford to uh, to spend loads of money on it so um, obviously I've got to pay the rent and everything soon so Fingers crossed it's, it's, it's something that's not horrendous and I can just sort of get it done. Because now things have sold and I've kind of given myself a time gap now. So I've got, you know, it's what, it's 20, 21st, 22nd of February now. So um, I've got roughly two months to get everything ready. <laughs> and hopefully the weather's okay. And um, we don't, you know, it's not going to dry out my plot, so I can't do any digging or anything like that. But um, I can start getting things cleared and start the planning on spacings and where everything's going. So uh, that's it for this one. So thanks for watching. Take care. And um, thanks for you know, all the subscribers, all new and old. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I do do long videos on some short ones, but sometimes it's just the long ones, are just it. they're easy for me. And it's, it's a lot of information in one it, and you can watch it as and when and how you want. So you can always you know stop it and come back to it, You know depending on what you're growing. Um, so take care, and I will see you in the next one. See you now. Bye-bye.